Hi, I'm Mike Smith. I'm a product director with the Conservation Technology Information Center. Uh, TKIC is a uh, nonprofit with um, conservation and agriculture. Uh, our goal is to promote and uh, you know, help spread the adoption of practical conservation systems that are you know, beneficial to you know, the, the bottom line, the, the productivity of the farm, and uh, the environment, soil, water quality, and uh, all that. We're designed to be kind of a place that there's a, a common ground where stakeholders across the agricultural community can, can come together to work on, you know, like I said, practical uh, conservation systems. Uh, so, uh, you know, bringing together stakeholders from agribusiness, academia, uh, trade associations, uh, other NGOs, and, uh, you know, the, the idea that this is not a place that we're here to assign blame or finger point or figure out, you know, Who's causing the problem is, you know, let's find what are the, the systems and practices that work well today on our commercial and industrial agricultural system, and what kind of tools and technologies are available that can, uh, you know, help uh, our country's farmers put those into practice. Uh, here's a couple of examples of some of our members, and again, just kind of reinforcing that idea that, you know, this is a, a place where. You know, everyone is meant to kind of come together, and you know, there's a lot of groups on here that you know, maybe don't always see working together, which I think is, you know, one of the, the major benefits of, of, you know, the way CGIC operates. Uh, these sessions today are uh, put together in collaboration with uh, the US EPA. Uh, their funding and, and all that helped things make it so that it's, uh, have the opportunity to, to attend these uh, sessions for free. Uh, our goal here, you know, hopefully you saw in the, you know, whatever advertisement or whatever convinced you to come into this room this morning, is to uh, help advisors see how they can provide additional value to the, to the farmer clients that, that they advise uh, by providing kind of some of the fundamentals of, of conservation planning. So the idea is not that, you know, you'll be a, an expert in some practice or, you know, being ready to, to go out and sit down and draw up the designs and everything, the NRCS specs or anything like that. Uh, more just seeing, you know, hey, you know, when you're out in the field with the farmer, look, you know, look at this opportunity for a you know, specific practice and being able to describe, you know, how it works, its benefits on the farm, and then, you know, kind of help them chart a course to uh, adoption their implementation. Um, so with that, we're kind of pressed for time and kind of, you know, wanting to make the most of the time we have this morning. I'll, I'll get out of the way. Uh, I'd like to uh, open it up to uh, Mike Day with the uh, Iowa Department of Ag and Land Stewardship. So, uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. And you're getting tired of hearing me. I've been around too much, so I'm going to disappear. No, I'm going to walk around even a little bit more. Well, it's great to be here to kick off this this session. Of, we're, we're big fans of CTIC and, and the work that they're doing. Uh, also, this is, I know, a joint uh, session with the Iowa Seed Association. I have a little bit of background with the Seed Association, having served on the board. Joan's trying to block that out of her memory uh, at the time that I served on the board. But, uh, I know that you'll have your annual meeting here uh, in a couple hours, and so uh, glad that this you know, combination of, of those two entities is together. You know, both represent uh, good examples of the kinds of private-public partnerships that we need to achieve our goals and advancing the Iowa's nutrient reduction strategy and adopting practices across the state at a scale that we've never seen before. So that requires us to think about doing things in ways that we've never done them before. And so that's uh, where it's very, very important that we again uh, engage with the private sector in ways that we haven't before to provide support and education and uh, technical assistance to our farmers and landowners and that's where, uh, where you all uh, can come into this and play a very, very important role and an increasingly important role. We can't do all of the work that needs to be done within the walls of government. You shouldn't want us to at the state level or at the federal level. And so uh, I certainly understand that and believe that wholeheartedly. Uh, so we know that, again, we have to move uh, to the private sector to do things even more efficiently uh, than we could ever dream of in government. And those are things that we're very, very interested in. So thank you to the organizations and to the businesses that are in this room who have already 
engaged uh, on this, on, on, on water quality. Uh, you know, I, Mike mentioned a couple times, but I love the way he teed up even just the, the concept of we need to look at the practical application, right? The practical reality of implementing practices. You know, it's one thing to say you ought to want to implement practices because it's the right thing to do and you'll feel really good when you get done. How far is that going to take us? Right, so we need to think about the practical applications. I like, I just noticed, I just grabbed these two handouts. Uh, one, long-term payoffs, diversity and uh, efficiency. Two, a return on your investment. Of course, we need to think about how to create a, a culture of conservation, not a culture of regulation, right? One of the, three of the core elements to Iowa's nutrient production strategy. First is that our practices are built on science. We have a scientific basis that says the research shows that when you implement this practice, you get this result. That allows us to go out and work and, and implement those practices and know that we will have a positive outcome. Two is that whether we, you live in the urban landscape or the rural landscape, there's something that you can do to improve water quality. We can't point our fingers at our friends in the urban areas and say it's all your fault, it's all golf courses fault, or it's the urban folks point at the rural folks and farmers and saying it's all your fault. No, we can't do that. Anymore. So that's why you see us working on both in both the urban and the rural uh, landscape, and it's important that we do that. And the final piece is this idea that uh, we work on a voluntary conservation standpoint. Again, culture of conservation versus culture of regulation. Make no mistake, if we do not advance, if we do not prove that we can use this strategy and this approach and these practices that we are pursuing here in the state of Iowa, or being a leader on that, by the way, but if we can't prove the success of that model and that approach, uh, freedom to operate will be an issue long term. Uh, you, can, uh, you can be sure that uh, folks uh, in Washington, D.C. and even in Des Moines will be looking at ways to regulate and tell you all, and tell our farmers and our landowners how to manage their farms. That's something that we're very keenly aware of and again trying to uh, show that there's a much better alternative making implementing practices that make sense on your farms uh, across across the state and recognizes the diversity of our operations and our land from east to west and north to south so those are the core elements that we're looking at and uh, again looking for partners to do that we uh, continue to offer cost share for management practices like cover crops uh, no-till strip till you're also seeing us focus uh, more of our efforts on uh, edge of field practices and structural practices like bioreactors, saturated buffers, and wetlands. Oh, and by the way, we're going to walk and chew gum at the same time. We're also remaining committed to the uh, traditional soil conservation, soil erosion prevention uh, practices that we know very, very well and have decades of experience with, terraces, waterways, buffer strips, uh, and those types of practices as well. We must have a, a full suite of practices available to us to, have to, to achieve the goals that we need. So uh, I'll just leave it at that and uh, let you jump into the program, but thanks for your interest in being here. Thanks for what folks are already doing in this room. But I would challenge uh, each of us to be thinking about, it. again, and I spend a lot of time thinking about this in terms of what, what do we do over the next several years. We have, to, if we're going to do things at a scale that we've never done them before, then we have to think of approaches to delivering technical assistance and financial assistance to build practices in ways that we've never thought of before as well. It's a great challenge, it's an exciting challenge. I'll tell you this, I'm proud that it's Iowa that will be running into these barriers and these walls and figuring these things out and not some other state. Uh, and I'm proud of that, that means we're gonna have fits and start. Uh, but I, I'm proud of the work that's being done and I'm glad it's us. I'm glad we're the ones that are leading the way. So thanks again for being here this morning. Thank you CTIC, Seed Association, uh, especially for uh, the invitation this morning. And uh, I'll let you get on with the program. Thank you.